Uh, welcome back once again everyone. I've got another CD mechanism that we're going to be taking a look at here. This is only a single disc and I believe these are made by Clarion. They're used in various different stereos. I've seen them in um, like Honda's Fords, uh, uh, some Chevys, and also like some actual um, Clarion head units. It's, uh, as I mentioned, a single disc. Uh, there's several different slight variations of the same one that I've seen and usually the biggest difference is the the, the outside this this uh, casing here and the way that it that it mounts some will be like a little bit thinner or smaller or whatever and also the circuit board underneath uh, usually this bigger one here is uh, has the decoding for mp3s and I, stuff like that I believe uh, usually the ones that are just regular CDs only will usually have a board that's only about this big right here so this one has this extra stuff here just for the mp3 decoding there's two common issues that I've, I've come across with these and one is that the gear in here that loads the or that runs the um, the roller for the loader uh, cracks gets a little hairline crack and so as the the rest of the mechanism here is trying to rotate it. All it does is just a slip on the shaft, and it the, the you know CD won't go. It won't unload it. It won't load it. And then the other issue is down here on the bottom. There's this plastic covering here that's protecting all those gears that are inside there. The mount that's farthest here to the back, which might be kind of hard to see in the video, but it's right in there, will crack. And so what happens is, as the motor is trying to run this mechanism, these gears here just start skipping because there's nothing to hold them down. So on a lot of those, once when you go to eject it or load it, you'll just get like a click, 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 click. It'll just get keep constantly clicking. Whereas if it's this gear that's up here, uh, just nothing happens. You hear the thing running, but you can't, you know, it won't take the disc and it won't pop it out or anything. But you really hear no other sounds other than that. You might get like a CD error or something on the on the LCD. I'm not 100% sure exactly what a, a head unit this came out of, but I was just given to, to fix because I've dealt with these before. So we're going to be taking it apart and figuring out if it's uh, this gear here or if it's the, the plastic in the back here, although it doesn't appear to be cracked, so it might not be that. What I usually do to run these just when I don't have the, the rest of the radio or whatever is I'll disconnect this uh, flat flex right here and the two farthest uh, contacts points here on the on the right I believe it's those two, I'm going to have to double check are the ones that run the motor that does the loading and unloading and uh, funnily enough they only use one motor to load and unload and to drive the the laser assembly like back and forth here and then the other motors here is just for the spindle so this uh, device only has two motors total so it's pretty easy to deal with so I'll usually pull this out and set it off to the side like this so I can have like easy access to them to those two on the right there and I'll show you we'll, we'll test it out first and we'll see what what the issue is so we can uh, know where to look uh, first of all I want to double check and make sure that it is those two uh, points there on the end that are the ones that run the motor so I'm going to remove this board from the bottom and it's usually only held in place with a couple screws I believe the the one that has a smaller board only actually has a uh, two screws that hold it down the one down here and then like one up here so after removing these this should come out and then we got to remove this other flat flex here and we'll just kind of tuck that underneath. So this should pop out just like that. Set that aside. And uh, sure enough, yeah, those two here going to the green and orange here, which go to that motor right there. And that's the one that, that drives everything around here. Well, actually, while we're down here, we can look inside in there and see if this is correct or not. Let's see. Come on. All right. Alright, let's see what bit here. There we are. It doesn't appear to be cracked, and usually when it is cracked, you can lift this up, but this one is not budging, so it looks like that's it completely intact there. 
So I don't believe that's the issue. So it probably is going to end up being the the gear up at the top here. So let me go ahead and set this up. And I've got a power supply here set to, I'm going to set it to 6 volts. I believe these usually run at 9. But I'm going to set it to 6 because I don't want it rotating or spinning too fast. And I'm just, I just have these test leads hooked up to a power supply. So if I touch these two here, I should hear the motor going. Sure enough, there it goes. Okay. So I'm going to take a, just a plain old CD here. I'm just going to pop it in slightly so that the roller can grab it. And let's see. Well, it's kind of laid out here so you can see the disc. Okay, so negative has to be on the inside and positive on the outside for it to roll it so that it loads inwards. And Yep, it's not taking the disc, so that means that this gear is just slipping and it's not gripping the the little shaft that runs the roller. So I'm going to have to take all this apart and get to that gear to replace it. And what I do is I actually, I don't have a source of replacement gears, so I've kind of resorted to making my own, which I'll probably do a video about sometime in the future. And... That's these right here. There's two different types that they'll use in this particular type of um, mechanism. Some of them have like a finer uh, pitch than others, and some are a little bit wider. So I don't know which one I need to use on this one yet. So I gotta take it out and figure that out. And to start off, we gotta remove this top plate here, which is just held in place by these two screws. So that comes off fairly easily. So that just comes off like that. You just lift up and then in the back it's got these two little clips that go into these little slots that hold it, hold it in place so that just kind of pivots up, lifts off and I drop the screw right here. Come on. Let's go. Alright. Okay. So that kind of frees the rest of this to be able to come out of this this whole um, metal enclosure. You got to remove these little uh, shock mounts, the one in the back here, and then there's uh, two more in the front, this one here, and this one here. But we also have to remove these springs. There's uh, four total. There's these two, and then there's uh, two more in the back. The uh, two in the front are the same size, so you can just remove these and just set them aside. But the ones in the back, the one over here to the left is shorter than the one on the right. So you got to make sure you put those in the right position to keep the right amount of tension on the rest of the mechanism. So this one here is usually you can remove by sticking a something like this in here and it kind of just comes up like that. Same with the one on the left. And it's kind of hard to do this at in front of the camera or behind the camera. So let's see. There we go. Those are out. I usually don't bother removing these from the little hooks up here because they're actually in there like pretty good and even if they move off to the side they don't usually come out. The ones in the back are a different story because all they have is that, that little hook right there so they can easily just pop out and then you'll lose them. So I remove these completely after taking them off of there. So that one, we'll set that to the side. And then remove this one here too and set that one to the side and as I was saying you can see how the one on the that one on the left is a lot shorter than the one on the right by about like it's about like half the size of that one. So yeah, just make sure you get these in the right position after I'm done messing with this uh, with this uh, mechanism. So now that we've got those removed, these are usually pretty easy. You can just kind of like lift them up and they pop out. There's a little clip on the on each side of them that will kind of help if you move it off to the side a little bit. It's just so you got to be really careful with those those little clips because if you force them a little too much they're easy to break. So just kind of put like slight amount of pressure like downwards on the on the mount while you're pulling the little clip off to the side and then if 
gentle enough. They just they just come off like that, so nothing damaged. So we got to do the same with the ones up here in the front. There we go. And the next one. It's a little bit harder because I can't. I'm probably going to have to use something else to help me out in the front one here. All right, for the other ones in the front here, since they're a little too close to the outer casing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one here to kind of push down on that mount and then use this little flathead to push away on the clip. And so there it goes. There, it popped out. And now i got to do the same with this other one here. So I'm going to use this, this little one pick to push down and use the flathead and then there it goes that separated I have to do the same here and there it goes separated so those are all out now oh I forgot there's one more spring right up here in the front and this one's usually stronger than the rest of them and it's usually a lot darker too the color on the spring so that one you can just remove out of the front after you unhook it. So, there's that. Alright. So, now that we got those uh, mounts freed up, we got to remove this. And I found that the easiest way to do this is just to kind of pry it off to the side a little bit, like so. And then this usually will just kind of lift out from the, the rest of the casing here. So, as you can see, we still got these two springs up here in the front. So, yeah, those aren't falling off easily. So, we can just set that aside. So, then we just got to deal with uh, the rest of this right here. The gears are mounted underneath uh, that this little enclosure here that kind of pivots. And actually, right off the bat, I can see that there is a hairline crack on that gear. I don't know if you'll be able to notice it, but it's right there. And actually, let me, let, let me get the macro so you can see it better. Okay, so there we go. You can tell that it's it's cracked in, in several places, not just one. It's cracked. The main crack is right there in that area, and you can see that it's spread out towards like the middle of that tooth, and then kind of off to the side. And then there's also another smaller crack right here on this side. And then it just uh, so what it does is it just kind of I don't know if I'll be able to do this, but yeah, it just kind of slips on that shaft when you're trying to load a disc or something in so we're going to be replacing that and I'm going to be removing the shaft as well because it makes it easier for me to install the new gear so let's, uh, let's go ahead and remove all that okay so like as I mentioned we're going to be removing this whole like white plate assembly right here we have to remove this spring which you can usually just kind of pop out and then that just uh, kind of comes off this other little piece like that and you just got to remember which way it goes because it looks seems to be a little bit longer on one side than it is on the other. So we'll leave that sitting just like that so we know where it goes. And then there is a little clip right here on this pin. That's what holds this uh, plastic assembly in place. And you can, if you kind of lift up on this uh, other plastic part here, you can make this come up like that. And then just kind of prying in there with something like maybe like a small flathead we'll release it you just gotta pry up gently I don't want to break the thing so you gotta be really careful here there we go okay kinda came out now so that should just lift off and then you gotta pull this out like that because there's this other little piece in the back that holds it onto the the rest of the assembly here to keep it so you know from like coming loose or anything so it keeps it in place so there's that there's our gear and since this is an ombre tight this should just easily come off if I just kinda put a little bit of pressure behind it and sure enough there it comes see it just falls right off so that's our bad gear and it turns out that this one is the the one with the wider uh, pitch on the teeth so I'm gonna have to use the the wider gear and I gotta remove the the roller here and I just this just should snap out like that and I should be able to just pull it right out there it is 
Got to be careful. There's uh, these two little plastic bushings on the ends. There's one on this side, and then there's one on the other side, which just rolled out. So, <laughs> got to be careful not to lose those. So, I got to make sure I put that back in. It'll probably be easier if I just put it on the end before I slide it back in, just like that, and then just put it in from underneath, like this, to keep it in place. And I'll probably end up removing the plastic piece on the other side, too, just so I can make sure that it's going where it's supposed to. All right, so I've got my new gear here, and I've I've already I've just kind of put it on the shaft a little bit here, but then I gotta push it down the rest of the way. And uh, these are just pressure fits, so I just gotta make sure that it goes down far enough. I would usually just push it in until the shaft is sticking out a little bit here on the end, and I gotta put it up against something. So let's see what I got here. I'll just use this plier, and I just gotta be careful not to bend the shaft or anything. We don't wanna make it all lopsided or anything so, okay it's a uh, part of the way there just gotta finish pushing it in the rest of the way and so about that much I gotta put the rest of the assembly in. I don't want it to be too tight because we don't want it to be squeezing up against this bushing here and not allowing it to rotate freely. So that should do it. I just gotta put it back together. Like I said, I'm gonna I'll just go ahead and remove that the other this white assembly from the other side here. Okay, so before I put that roller back in, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this side just so I can uh, see where it's actually going. And this one has a spring as well, so I gotta be careful not to let that spring out. <laughs> and uh, you gotta be careful here not to break this one either. So there it goes. So set that aside. And as you can see, there's the hole where the uh, that little plastic bushing fits into. So we'll put that on. And one other thing I'm going to do before I put this all back together is I'm going to clean the roller with alcohol just to clean off any grease or something that might have been left from my fingers and stuff on there so that CD doesn't start slipping or anything in the future or any time in the near future. Alright, so I've cleaned it with alcohol and I'm going to try my best to not touch it at all in this uh, whole centerpiece here. So i got to slide it back in from this side. try to keep it kind of tilt upward so that it doesn't the little bushing doesn't fall off and there it goes it slid right in so that was easy and now I just gotta snap this side back into that slot so I just gotta push down on it a little bit here and just there we go so that's that that's in place so this should rotate pretty well it's not too bad now I just gotta put the rest of the mechanism on here there's that gear that's the one that will drive it when the rest of the motor is rotating it and we can put this back on so you gotta make sure that this uh, little side here goes into the rest of that rest of that plastic assembly and this there's a little peg on this part right here that where it lifts the roller up and down it's got to go inside of that slot and then that little pin right there should just snap into place and once I put the spring in then we'll put this back where it's supposed to go all right gonna get the other side in now so this one should just go right in there and this one also has a peg on that where that little slot is so you just got to be careful to get that back in so there it goes so that's in so as you can see what this does is that spring kind of like makes it so that it snaps like up or down to grip the the disc with the roller so so that's good just gotta get the spring off on this side now alright so that springs back on we got that back in there this side's good so it should be good to 
go, but we're going to go ahead and test it. And we can actually test this just as is right there. Let's see. All right, so here it goes. We'll just kind of put the CD in there just enough so that the roller can grip it. We'll play some power and there it goes. Perfect. Then we'll just reverse the leads here and it should pop it right back out. Perfect. All right, so we'll go ahead and put this back together and uh, this should be good. Like I said, I don't have the rest of the stereo to test with, but hopefully, uh, get something out of that and I really wish I had a source for you know for buying maybe like the actual these gears up pre-made because I know I'd link to it but I, I have no idea where I could buy some of those gears and so like I said I ended up resorting to make my own so I'll just I'll make a video in the future about how I go about doing that it involves uh, some uh, mixing some stuff together and whatnot so let's go ahead and uh, put this back together basically we just gotta run everything backwards from how we did it or how we took it apart and we got to start off by kind of shimming it in here on this this side and again you got to got to pull on this a little bit just not too much to to bend the metal too far and once that goes in like that then we can go ahead and start snapping these mounts back in it's a little bit tricky just because they don't quite go on the way they came off but once you get them on there, you just gotta snap them back into place by pushing down on those on the ends that have those clips, but it's not a big deal. So that one's back in. Gotta get this one back on here. Just gotta position it right, and then it just they just snap right in just like so. And then the one in the back. It's probably the easiest one. Just like that. And bam, snaps right in. So that's all in place. Get those uh, two springs in the front. Again, a little pick like this usually helps quite a bit. And actually, with these in the front, what I do is I have a, I have a second pick that I've put a little bit of a hook into, just like that. And with this, what I can do is I can come in from underneath and I can uh, hook the the loop on the spring there and just bring it into just like so it's kind of uh, sorry kind of hard to see there but that's how I get those in let me see if I can get a better shot on this side so come in from underneath hook the spring ah sorry guys try to get it from here this might work so hook it there Bring it down. Of course, that didn't work. All right, let's see if maybe that's a better angle. So I'm gonna hook it in. Bring it down towards where that pin is, where it's supposed to go. Push it in and then release. So there it goes. So those are in, and now the ones in the back. Again, we got to remember the put these in the right spots again so yeah the shorter one went on the, the left here the longer one went on the right and these are actually pretty easy especially if you just leave them right side up and then hooking it back in is not a big deal like, like that Something like that. So that's all in. Now we just need the one in the front, on the bottom there. And if you haven't put the circuit board back on, it's a lot easier to do because then you can kind of loop it on there where it's supposed to go. And you can just and then come in from the front and grab it. If I could. Come on. It just flew out. <laughs> it's okay, I saw where it landed. So I got it. Okay, maybe I'll just put my finger on it like that just to keep it from 
if it does snap out so I can kind of keep a little bit better control over it. Man, this one's giving me a hard time. Okay, there we go. Got it in. So, that's in. Now we just got to put the circuit board back in place. It's not a big deal. I almost forgot, in the front here, there's this little tab sticking out that the board kind of goes into just like that. So you got to make sure you do that first, otherwise it's a, kind of a pain in the butt trying to get it back in there because it won't go back in. So once that's in, everything just, just kind of drops into place. Got to bring these flat flexes up. That, but, so that's it. All right, so the board's back in, all the screws are in, got the flat flexes connected, got to make sure that this stays underneath this plate up here and this one as, as well. The only thing left to do up in the top is to put this cover back on. And as I mentioned, the, you got these uh, little tabs that go inside those slots. So let's just go in there like that and then the rest of the assembly just drops down. And just uh, two springs and that's it. It's ready to go. So uh, thanks for watching again. Remember, if you like this kind of stuff, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I shall see you guys next time. Thanks again. Bye.